Chat Podcast. Andrew Swallow in the house. Um, yeah, just catching up on a chin wag. Yeah. Tell us, um, tell us a bit about your story. So, for those who don't know, what's your sort of like? What did you do with your life to this point? <laughs> what have you done with what your life? life? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, probably um, most known for um, playing footy, so AFL. Uh, so I did that for twelve years at North Melbourne. Um, but I actually grew up in Perth, in Western Australia. Um, so I'm one of uh, one of four boys. Yeah, grew up to my mum's sort of Dutch background, um, dad's English background. So it's like AFL was sort of, I suppose it wasn't their uh, what they really knew. But yeah, growing up in Perth, that was, it was AFL mad. So I I was just attracted to it, and yeah, having sort of three other brothers, we just like sport was what we did. So it was um, yeah, whether it was basketball, footy. Any, you know, at the back playing cricket. Um, and where just, where do you rank in the in the brothers? I'm number two, so I've got an older brother. So it's pretty much yeah, older brother Chris, who's um, two years older than me. And I've got a young brother Simon, who's two years younger than me, and then Dave, uh, my brother Dave. So he's he's still playing footy at the moment actually. So he's at, at the Gold Coast Suns. Sick. And um, and family life for you now? Uh, what's yeah, so I've got I'm married um, and have three kids. So Isabel's eight, uh, Jude's six, and Sarah is three. Yeah. Amazing. I was telling the story in the podcast the other week when um, when we were at that party at Brunswick, mm. and then um, and Venus is I think he asked you what did, what do you do for a living? <laughs> it's like he kicks a ball between posts. Yeah. And he's like, oh cool. So it's amazing that that's a job when you yeah. think about it that way. But um, when did you get into AFL, like was it, at what age were you playing? Um, so actually, I didn't start till I was probably 11 or 12 playing for like a local sort of junior, like junior team. Um, late? Yeah, it's a bit yeah. like most kids would start to this, you know, six, seven, play old kick now. Um, like my young fella, Jude, he's just started, started old kick, so which is, which is cool. But yeah, like we, um, I like started basketball a bit earlier, but yeah. Um, like mum, like grew up, mum and dad. We went to church, and so footy was on a Sunday. Um, so mum sort of wouldn't wouldn't let us go and play. Um, and eventually, like after like pesting, you know, pestering her and nagging her for a long time, she eventually eventually caved in caved and in, um, yeah. let us go. Yeah. Um, and so you know, like I think after a year or two, it went on games. Sort of got moved to a Saturday, so it was fine. But. Um, yeah, started at sort of eleven or twelve, and and yeah, I like always loved it. That was always, um, you know, footy was just my you know, passion. Going down with all my mates, and and your brother, your brother was playing at that point. Uh, no, so my older brother really only played basketball. I think he had one year of footy, uh, yeah. but mainly basketball. But then the my two younger brothers, they sort of always just just sort of followed, sort of from me. Um, yeah. And at what point do you do you just play and know you've got a talent? Like, was it obvious straight away, or...? Um, I, like, I suppose I was always, you know, when I started playing, I was, I was probably one of the better kids, um, sort of knew that. But it probably, it probably wasn't until I was 15, I think, we made, um, I made the WA sort of state team. And then, like, even that, it was sort of like, okay, I'm, you know, like, you know, make the state team, which is great, like, you're one of the better kids in the state. And then we played a national carnival, um, and that was probably when... I think that was the first time, yeah, it was sort of 15 where I realised like, okay, I'm, you know, I think I, I um, made the All-Australian team, so it was one of the better kids in the carnival and it was like, you know, okay, well maybe this is like doable, you know, like yeah. it's sort of up until that point, you, you know, like the dream was to play, to play footy, um, but you just, yeah, you, you never really know how good you are, um, but yeah, when I sort of played kids uh, from my age around the country and you know I sort of held my own it was like okay this this could be could be on the cards and then you go into what like a, a state team so two teams at that point like a local team in the state yeah so I had a local team um, I even had like a local team and then a like you know so you go from local to like a waffle team so like um, my waffle team was East Fremantle so I'd play some footy there and then from that you get chosen to play for state so um, yeah a few sort of different teams going on at that point. And did, did you love it, like, at that point of, you know, 12, yeah. 13, 14, 15, did you just love the game? Were you at the back kicking a footy? Yeah, like, I was a mad West Coast supporter, Eagles. Favourite player? 
Um, favourite player, like at that stage, we had like Benny Cousins, like Daniel Kerr, um, you know, Chris, early days of Chris Judd. So they were sort of the guys that you know you sort of idolised growing. Or, or growing. what position were you? They were. I was a midfielder. Like, and, and like, they were yeah, all, they, they were, were all midfielders. midfielders. Yeah, yeah. Like in my junior, like when I first started that, like footy, I was probably I probably played more centre forward than that. But as I, you know, as you see the progress of the ranks, like I might have been a bigger kid. You know, around my, you know, well, my mates. For my, context, Jude, du- the he's seven, seven year old, is six is three times the size <laughs> as anyone else in the class. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like, I'm like, I'm only six foot, so I'm not, you know, like I'm not overly tall, but like I must have been, you know, five, nine, five, ten at, you know, thirteen. But then I probably didn't, yeah, I didn't grow heaps. But like, you know, as I as I progressed, you know, to, you know. Um, my waffle club and then to my state team, like everyone just seemed to get bigger and bigger and you know, like by the yeah, like I was pretty you know, quickly realised I'm gonna be I'm not gonna be one of the big fellas. Yeah. And fact and flashing how big are the forwards? Like six four? Yeah, six four, like so um you know, like the biggest guys playing AFL at the moment about oh, like two hundred and eleven centimetres, so they got a good yeah, thirty odd centimetres on me. Um, too much. Yeah, too much, yeah. They're big Big boys. And just anyone like watching back from sort of your, how old are you? Are you like? I'm 36 now. Yeah. 36. Anyone, anyone watching back from your sort of era, any iconic posters on the wall of like kicks or just premiership stuff that someone might remember? From mine or from? From you, from you, yeah. Oh no, like from you as a kid. Yeah. Um, no, I just remember maybe having like the West Coast Eagles 92 and 94 premiership cup posters on the wall because they were like like I still remember having the um the what are they the VCR what are the what are the old school um yeah yeah VHS VHS yeah yeah, yeah I knew it I know yeah. what you mean yeah yeah, yeah so I remember yeah. like having them and like pulling them out and watching like the grand finals like over and over like on repeat like, so good yeah does that mean you're a Super Nintendo kid as well Super Nintendo yep yeah and, um yeah Mario Kart um what else Goldeneye Donkey Kong uh, I never really played Donkey Kong. It was more like it's disappointing. A bit of Golden <laughs> yeah. Eye um, and Mario Kart were sort of the two two big games we got into. You progress into sixty four life yeah, as 64, well. Sixty four, yeah. Zelda, yeah. Zelda. I never played sixty four, but, but yeah. everyone's like Golden Eye sixty four or Mario yeah, Kart yeah. sixty four. I feel like I missed the actual oh, yeah. portion of life at that yeah, point. Yeah, no, no, that was. I was probably outside. Well, you know. Mum <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. like, would get us like that. Was sort of you know we'd be like. That would be Christmas present, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fill up our, you know, holidays would be like, you know, just sort of yeah. playing outside and then coming back in for a break and oh, the best. Jumping on sixty four and like because there's four boys, we had four controllers and off we went. Yeah. Good competition between yeah. the boys. Yeah, great. Yeah, it was great. Like loved it. And any brothers like listening back? Who was who was the best at <laughs> Golden Eye? At Golden Eye. Who would have been? No, probably my older brother Chris was probably. Just because he probably would have been more coordinated than us at the time, like. No, that's a, that's a politically correct answer. <laughs> and um, and I might forget to get to this, but like, fa- who's your favourite player of all time? Footy player. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like all time. I don't know. Like I don't know if I just have one. Like I probably like those sort of like West Coast Eagles sort of teams of the like early nineties that won a couple of premierships. There's like Peter Matera. Um, they were the sort of guys, uh, Dean Kemp, they're probably the guys that like, yeah, like I loved, you know, loved watching and just, just, I suppose, like when I look back on it, like I just have great memories of, you know, like that growing up and, and being in love with, you know, watching and them play. W- when you're watching them play, would they all been like tradies? Yeah, back then, yeah, like they would have all had another, yeah. they would have, you know, like, they, yeah. yeah, it was probably not until, oh, probably the sort of mid 90s to late 90s, they started moving into sort of more full time, you know, like that was just what they did. But yeah, like I think most of the guys would have had second like jobs. Second jobs. So like impressive, yeah, hey. Train at night time. And yeah. Like um It's amazing. Yeah. Um yeah, okay, and of the modern era, best player you played against? Um best player like you can pick a couple, you know. Well like Gary Ellett Junior was just a like a freak. Um played it yeah, like he was at Geelong. Went to the Gold Coast for a while, but just some of the things he was able to do, 
like just destroyed us sometimes in some games. Like kick goals, like rack up the footy. Um, I think I was telling you I, I was talking to him at a wedding. Yeah, and I yeah. didn't didn't know who he was, <laughs> and I was because I didn't I didn't I mean I didn't know who you were either. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't know anyone from AFL, and um, I was like that guy's a legend. And then yeah. someone's like, how do you know Gary Ablett? I'm like, who's Gary Ablett? <laughs> it's pretty funny, yeah. but he did, doesn't look like uh, um, no, nah, he doesn't like you look like at him you, you look like, like an athlete, but he does. He looks like a, he's just gonna, yeah, like yeah. he's very like he's got big solid like hips. And yeah, legs, yeah, and, like he's just like powerful, you know. Like, really nice guy of yeah. my memory. Yeah, like, yeah, super humble. Yeah, just quiet. Like it, well, his, his old man was like you know one of the greatest ever. So you know he had to sort of grow up like you know with his dad just being an absolute like superstar, and especially down Geelong where it was you know like such a fishbowl. Yeah, um, it would have been pretty tough sort of you know to grow up. You know, grow up going to go, games, yeah, watching your dad, dad play and be like a, a god, right? Kind but of then thing. also, yeah, well they called him the god. Did they? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, called God. Yeah. So like, good. But then for him to like, you know, come on and play and, and then be arguably just as good as what his old man is. Like, it's, yeah, it's pretty incredible. That'd be really interesting to talk to him about the pressure, maybe, you know? Maybe Jude feels that pressure. Maybe he should get in touch with Jude. <laughs> but uh, all right, so so you were, you were um, you know, sort of 15, got the state team. Mm. And then from what was the sort of process from there to go pro? Um... So like we in the AFL we have a draft so every oh yeah just like, for, how, explain how the sort of draft works so like well in, in simple terms like you know you finish last on the ladder you get first pick you know like all the way through to win a premiership you get there's eighteen teams you get the eighteenth pick now it's a bit more complicated now because you can trade picks and you can trade players and if you if you've grew someone you can you got better shot at them or something? Yeah, well, like if you, you know, like different clubs in different sections have academies where if they players come through, they get first access to them. and So there's all these different rules, but essentially, like, you know, like when I came through, it was, um, you know, if you finished last, you got the first pick and that was it. So, like, I wasn't eligible till I was 18 to get picked. Well, actually, I, so I, I continued from 15, played state 16s and, and was that Seven full on, like, just about that period? Mm. Was that, were you training, like, most days? Um, were you out, no, not, you out of school? Every day, or? But like, I would, yeah, like, every now and then I'd have to miss school for bits and pieces or go away for a carnival or um, I made the, um, we had, it back then it was called the AFL Academy or AI, it was to do with our, um, the Australian Institute of Sport was attached to, so we would fly around when I was sort of 16, 17 and have a camp in different areas, you know, around Australia, which is pretty cool. So sort of the top 30, yeah. kids, 30 kids in Australia did that. Um, yeah, so we, we sort of did, did that. But I was still, like, I was quite academic, so I was sort of still pretty keen on doing well. And I, I, I suppose I always knew that, um, although I loved it and footy was sort of what I wanted to do, like, you were sort of never guaranteed, you know, like, you never guaranteed, like, you're going to go and make it, so... Yeah, you being 15 at that stage, I guess the age, the age that you were watching the premierships at, the yeah. last span of an AFL player was probably till 28. Well, like, you yeah, know, and yeah, now even it's now, just yeah, even now the average career is sort of five or six years. Wow, yeah. But, like, back then it was probably, like, less. But it was, like, maybe just under four years. You know, we've, a couple of new teams have come in, so they've sort of thrown the new, you know, players on the list. Yeah. So, like, guys are able to stay around a bit long, longer. But, yeah, it's still... You know, the, like, the percentages of players to go on and play, like, a large amount of footy, 100, 200 games is, you know, it's like a couple percent, 5%, 10%. So it's not, so you just sort of know, like, you know, like, a lot of things can go against you. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, maybe I was, um, I had my head screwed on back then, or I don't know what it was, but, like, I, I just like always knew that it was, like, I, I, it was never a given. So, like, I, you know, I still, you know, tried hard at school and, that so it was always a, a fine balance of you know trying to do as well as I could at school and you know like sort of have a pathway to uni or you know something after you know footy yeah and then sort of you know balance that with footy so yeah most 18 year olds are not thinking about no, that no, so it's, no, that's no, impressive yeah. I mean it says a lot about you that's cool like super switched on yeah um and then so you got drafted and who who did you go with so I got picked at uh, pick oh, you don't, you, don't, you don't have a choice. No, so you don't have a choice. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah. Like you literally, yeah. Um, and were you with the lease at the draft? Were you with the lease at the time? Yeah. So we were. So I started dating um, the lease of my 
wife or yeah, back then girlfriend, at, girlfriend the time. at the time. So she casual was, acquaintance. She was yeah. a year older than me in um, school, so she had yeah. finished school, and I was sort of going. So you were like toy, toy boy vibe. Yeah, 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 pretty much. <laughs> yeah, how good is that? Um, so, how, how, like so you met at school. Was, yeah, we met at school, so we went to the same school together. Um, yeah, just sort of it was yeah, it was funny. She like literally was finishing school when we started um, sort of dating. So she went up to. Had a sort of gap year, and I was sort of trying to, you know, have a crack at footy. And and my my because my first year actually put my name into the draft. I didn't actually get picked up, so missed out. And I just finished school, and it was like, okay, well, what do I, what do I do? Do I, you know, put my head down and you know, like have a crack at playing footy, or do I go off to uni, or do I try and do both? And I think at the time I just decided like I really want to give footy like another crack. Um, and so I'd gone to uni to do commerce. Um, yeah, but I just thought like it was probably too much to do, try and sort of do both. So I sort of got a part time, well, I got a job, but it was pretty flexible. And were you got were you still part of the a church or at the church at that point with a Is that how you met her? Uh, we met at school, but we used yeah. to go to the same church. Yeah. And was that was that almost like a, a, a spiritual, like guidance or to not go to uni but to go was it like a gut feel or how do you um you articulate that one i'm trying to think at the time what it was maybe it was just pro- it was probably more just my logical part <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if i do this i can do that yeah, yeah yeah but yeah i think it was more it was probably more just like it was going to be it was probably more i think back at it now and i'm like you know yeah mum and dad they've, they've done well like it was it was you know probably a struggle for them having four boys, like, you know, going through school, you know, they didn't come from a lot of money. So it was like, well, I'm going to have to support myself, you know, like, can I do that? Can I work, do uni, plus do footy? Like, I just felt like it was probably going to be too much. So I was like, well, if I, yeah. at least if I work and then I do, you know, like footy, like I can sort of manage that pretty well. It's amazing when you think about it, like you didn't, you didn't have a fallback plan or you couldn't have a plan B. So you have to go mm. sort of plan A and just yeah. make it happen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I just sort of went off. So drafted that. and then, so she w- packed up and moved with you? No, or? so we did long distance for a couple of years. So like I got drafted on a, and it was funny because I missed out the year before. I remember I didn't even want to hear the draft. Like I, we like, we actually went away for the weekend because I was like, I was just, I think I was too nervous. Like yeah, I, yeah. I was so, like it, it was such a, like it was, yeah, it was pretty, pretty hard to take the year before sort of you know half expecting to get picked and then not be picked so it was almost like I didn't want to didn't want to have to deal with that like you know not not get done so and I remember like I had a manager and um I remember you know I had done pretty well leading up until the draft and so yeah there was some expectation that like I'd probably go and you know might be one of the early picks and I remember we got to round two um, end of round two, and he called me and was like, "Oh, it's end of round two. You haven't been picked up yet, but you know, um, I think he said, I think he said Adelaide. Had, Adelaide had, um, said they're going to take you with their next pick, which was pick forty four. And then anyway, I got a call a bit later, and he's like, "Oh, North Melbourne have picked you, pick forty three, and that was it." So, and was there any club you just didn't want to go to at that point? Um, like, no, nah, because I was just desperate to play footy. Like, yeah, cool. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't care. Like, I'll play. You know, like I, I probably had preferences of where I would have wanted to go, but I was like, but you don't have a. That's interesting. You don't have yeah, a choice. You don't and, have a choice. And on the on the draft pick, if they pick you, how long are you like bound to that club for? So I got draft. So I had a, at that time, it's like a two year like contract. Two year minimum before you. Yeah. So yeah. then, the, but like now, I think you know the early picks are like a sort of. I think there may be three years, maybe even talk of a four-year contract. So and was a part of you like, I want to go back and play for West Coast, you know? I would have, like, I would have loved to play for West Coast, but, yeah, I think I didn't, I was at that point where I was like, I don't care, I just want to play. So yeah, just that's get cool. Me on, get me on a list. So, like, I, yeah, I got drafted on a, a Saturday, and I'd, like, pack my bags, and I was flying on the Thursday, and that was, you know, like, I think I moved to Melbourne... I still remember it like the first of December two thousand and five, and that was. And know, how, like, how did you find Melbourne? Um, oh, like it was, yeah, like it was amazing. Like it was, you know, I think early days. A bit colder than. A bit colder, yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. Colder, but like, you know, like footy, you know, like lived and breathed. Like I had, mm. it was funny. My bro- older brother 
had been living in Melbourne for about six months and it was like, I literally saw him, he moved back like a week after I moved there. So it was like, <laughs> it was like I got to see him once when I was there and then he moved back. So I, I literally knew, I didn't know, you know, a single person in the state. Um, you know, moved there, like a, our footy um, manager picked us up, picked me up, sat at his house that night and then I moved in with one of the other players for the first couple of months and yeah, like it was... Is that almost... Good in a way of not knowing anyone because you can just your team becomes your your brotherhood or. Oh, you know. I think. It, yes, yes, and no. I think it like I think it would be great to have somewhere where you could go when you feel like you know you're comfortable. Like mm. you know you sort of like it's you know moving into a place with someone that you don't know and like first know, time out of home. As first well. time out of home, like you know. And like, what, what was your um what was your household abilities like at that point? No, so not mom, like, like, I, down I remember everything. telling like I remember. I told the story to a few people before but like I remember ringing mum up and being like mum how do you cook pasta like <laughs> like I was that's like a, I'm pretty it's a fair sure, question like yeah, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure I know how to like yeah I think I think I, this is what I just need to like double check and it was like literally you get to put water in a pot boil it and chuck the pasta yeah. <laughs> read, hard, read, the, read like, the back of the read packet read the back of the packet but like it was just something like I wasn't sure like even <laughs> like you know washing the clothes like you know yeah. still like okay am I doing it right am I gonna you know get it wrong and and like I'd spent like you know like the year the year before I got drafted because I sort of wasn't doing uni and I was just playing like a mum would start to get me to do more around the house and so that was sort of good because it sort of helped me you know learn a bit but it was like after the first sort of month or two like I moved in with a guy who got drafted as well with me um, out of Adelaide or country Adelaide and he was like he was a year younger than me he was seventeen and so like you know the two of us in a house in like the suburbs of Melbourne like not you know like and I like he knew less how to look after himself than what I did so like <laughs> yeah. you know just trying to like get it and it's like we had to you know trying like, to survive try and survive yeah and, like I look back at it now it's like well that was a a pretty big ass like I think yeah nowadays footy clubs are much better equipped to like support like we just didn't have the club just didn't have the amount of um services and yeah you know, like this the network of of people around the club to help sort that out. Whereas most people, you know, kids now, they go, they'll go into a host family and they'll, you know, like they'll get looked after for a year. So you get, you know, or even six months, so you get a chance to like just get in. Because yeah. it's, it's a big adjustment coming to like training a couple of nights a week to like, it's your job. Like every day you're getting up, you're tired, you know, pre-season it's like, and they've got to go home and they've got to cook dinner and then I've got to, you know, like, do my own washing, like wash all the clothes <laughs> yeah. and like yeah. all the stuff that you, you know, oh, that your huge. mum and daddy you, are still doing. Like, the transition for just yeah. into the workforce is huge. Yeah. Let alone like move into is that yeah. is that classes interstate across yeah. the across yeah, the country, country basically. Yeah, yeah. Cross country, no idea how to yeah. cook pasta. And just yeah. even le like learning like little things like learning how to like navigate the streets from the trams. Like, yeah, the trams, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like remember getting into the city and like. You know, like a hook turn, like what's a hook turn? And like, you know, you can't turn because when the tram's coming, you get pulled to the left. Like, it's just all these different things that you have to learn. And like, um, yeah, it was a pretty, yeah, like I look back at it now, I'm like, well, I don't know how we survived, but we did, you know? And then, um, and but I, and I remember early days being like, if we had two days off in a row, which was very rare because we might have, you know, like we, you know, especially pre season, you train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, have Thursday off train Friday, Saturday, and then have Sunday off. So we'd sort of... So what do you guys have off, like, November, December? Or uh, not even? No, you said October, November. But, like, even then, like, back then, we would have... I remember one pre-season, we had, we had five weeks off, and that was sort of the break that we got. Whereas, like, now, it's a, it's a lot better. That, you know, the clubs expect you to, you know, train more in your off-season, so you get a longer break. They might get sort of eight, ten weeks now. How, how hard are the pre-seasons? Any stories of just, like, throwing up? Um, oh, they're tough. Like, you're just big three-hour sessions, you know, in the middle of, like, summer, yeah. like, heat. Probably the, the toughest things we did were the camps. Like, we do... Um, so we had the... Um, in my sort of second or third year, we had the Special Operations Group um, in Melbourne. So, like, the secret police sort of, you know, come and take us and just take us... Like, you know, I remember they told us, like, oh, just bring you... You know, we're going away for a few days, bring your golf clubs, and we rocked up, and these guys just absolutely destroyed us for, like, three days. With like, the golf clubs? <laughs> yeah, with the golf clubs. But, like, all the, we just thought we were going on this, like, you know, bit no of a pretty, like, way. and they just, 
like they were just hard asses. Like they just, we had to pretty much, they just strip you down. Like we had to like all wear, like they split us up into three or four groups. And so like we were like colors. So we couldn't refer to anyone by their name. If it was like, you know, you might've been blue, blue six and I was, you know, maybe red four or something like that. And so we, like, then that's how you had to refer to someone. If you, you know, if you said someone's name, they would like, and they heard it, they'd get you and they would just, would be punishments. And we had these, we had these metal bars that we used, we had to like, whenever we had punishments, we just had to hold over the, like our heads for, until they said, you know, like stop. So like, and we <laughs> just, sounds like just, corporal sort of, punishment yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And we just like, <laughs> they just like, like it physically exhausted us. And so like we would. How many days? Uh, I think it was like three days. And so we like, they took us like to the beach and we just did like, on the, like in the sand jumping off the, you know, into the water, like off the end of the jetty, swimming back in. So we were wet, we were cold, like. So you were like, at least like, I'm going to play like golf three, for three days. Yeah, <laughs> like, just have fun. Yeah, yeah. three, four oh, hours of like just vlogging us. And then we went out to like up into the, like, I don't know, Dan, in the, you know, Danny Nongs, just out of Melbourne into the ranges and like just did hiking. And like we, you know, like slept on the side of a hill. And, <laughs> you know, like then it was like, you know, maybe 45 minutes of sleep and they come and, get us all up and um you know then we i remember we took they took us to like this um sounds like know, parenthood in the middle of the <laughs> don't you reckon it that, sounds like being a parent when yeah, you well, well, yeah. well, so i don't know where they took us but they took us to the yeah. spot and they were like just you've got to follow this track and you got to walk as fast as you can until we tell you and so like you're just walking this track with backpack on just as fast as you could and, and like this would have been like the middle of the night for I don't know how long it might have been like three or four hours until and like you're just walking until you get told to like stop and you've been going all day and any time you had like a spare minute to like rest they would give you you had a notebook and pen like paper and they would tell you to be like they would want you to write stuff so they'd be like oh give us 500 words on whatever and so like you'd have to be sitting there and like yeah it was just it was and what, it was like, and what, what it, do you what do you walk away with out of that? Oh, uh, like, I think it was just like in the end. Like I remember, like thinking it was like the worst thing I ever did. Like it's <laughs> the hardest thing. Like yeah. all the time, I was like, I just want to give up. Like all I could think of, like I just want to quit. Like I want to give up. But then once it got to the end, it was like that was actually the best thing I ever did. Like because yeah. I let's think do it, it again. Yeah, but like, <laughs> Fill it, it up like, again. Yeah. I, I, and I, it was actually I look back at it now. I was like I was almost so lucky that I did it in like my second or third year because I did it at the start of my career and I think I realised like how far I could physically, mentally, emotionally push myself and be able to get through. And so like anything I ever did after that was probably never as hard as that experience that I went through. And we did another couple of camps after that, but it was like that sort of, that three or four days. Yeah, but they like you, they clubs wouldn't do it now because it was, it would just be, Illegal? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you sound like you're illegal, just, but like, yeah. not, 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 no, no, not illegal, but yeah. like, um, I think just the toll that it, like, clubs would just be too wary of, like, giving their players over to, like, another organisation and just letting them do whatever, like, because blokes could get so easily injured and, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, I didn't think about that. And they're investing a lot of, you know, they've got so much money invested in these guys to, you know, like, keep them well and, ha- you know, like, yeah, you know, we weren't eating properly for like two or three days and like, you know, just getting like tortured this almost. So good. Yeah. You sound like you're describing me going to Pilates every morning at six. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am I going to get through this 40 like, minute class? I remember some, like on one of the things, some of the guys had done the wrong thing or I think they sat down and when we were maybe walking and like they just had a bit of a rest and they thought they weren't, people weren't watching them, but they were. Yeah, because these guys had like night vision goggles, so they could see, you know, they could oh, see us, and they're so watching cool. in the trees. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, like, I remember they like the next day they like pulled us out, and we like they had their like the old school like fences where um what do you like the uh, old barbed wire, not barbed wire, but like the ones where you just like um I can't remember, I can't remember the word for them, but like I remember we had to like almost like in a sitting stance, like with our hands in there, holding ourselves up. On it, and they, and they got the guys at the front, and they had like gave them a, I think it was like a can of coke and like a tin tan, and they had to lick the um, and we had to sit there and hold ourselves up while they were licking the chocolate, they had to lick the chocolate off the <laughs> tin tan, and um, drink the can of coke like, and we hadn't eaten or like drank you know anything for like 
how many many days, but it was that was the sort of camp it was. It was like you know, like you we're all in this together, and you know you're costing you know yourselves or your teammates like you know that's by cool. You making yeah, decisions that are you know. So it was like yeah, it was an amazing experience, but it was also. A, I'd be I'd be kicking someone for that Tim Tam. <laughs> what are you a sweet guy? Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. What, sweet, what yeah. what's your what's your choice? Like lollies, chocolate. Ch- probably chocolate. Yeah. And what would you go for? Like right, not now, but like in general. Um, well, we we uh, these days our uh, diets. <laughs> yeah. Um. What we go for? I used to love like um Cadbury Black Forest. Oh yeah. Chocolate. Yeah. Like, it's got the little jellies and the yeah. Yeah, I was more dairy milk. But you know, yeah. caramella still good though. Yeah, yeah. Even just a like block of actually um, the Whitaker's um coconut rough like or the coconut like thing is like incredible. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. I like your passion. All right, so first game, tell me about it. You are you freaking out or are you like no? Nah, um, this is this is my first you... game. Well, it was actually run through a tunnel of some description. Um, it was in per- it was back in Perth actually. We played Creo so. Um, just happened to be two teams in Perth, right? Yeah, Frio, West Coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, like it just happened to be that was got picked for my debut. Yeah, round eight, two thousand and six, back in Perth. So um, no, like it was cool. Like I, I think I kicked a point with my first kick. Um, it was just a like you know amazing experience to be playing your first game in front of you know your family and friends and yeah, cause so it was, good. Like mum and dad would have obviously flown across to Melbourne for it, but it was cool that. I could have, you know, all my mates there as well watching. That's um, so cool. And then what, like, obviously you developed a bit of a leadership. You know, you are the captain, mm, right? And yeah. was that something that was in the 12, 13, 14, were you always that sort of captain leader or is that something you developed? Or, um, like, <clears throat> talk, us through was, the, talk us through, like, the journey to captain. Well, like, I was, like, I don't know, I think, like, I was head boy in, like, primary school and, like, you know, student council at high school. Yeah, captain... WA state 16s and 18 teams. Um, so, like, I think, I think back then, like, I was, ch- like, I think I was a very mature kid. So I think I was, I was captain because I was, like, oh, that kid isn't going to go and, you know, do stupid things. So, like, we can trust this kid. So, yeah. like, I was, I was probably Sound chosen as very a, as mature. That sort of, yeah, as that sort of kid. Yeah. Um, and what, what would you, like, you know, what would you attribute that too is that like a nature thing nurture thing Um, is there something in you know like i think a bit of like maybe a bit of nurture but like you know my brother my older brother probably wasn't like that and then you know my youngest brother is probably you know like it's very more much more laid back and you know like laissez-faire um so i don't know maybe it's just a the like i don't know a character trait i don't know like and you know yeah, like an almost gift that has been nurtured as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Like I think, I don't know, I think you know, we, we used to talk about it at the footy club, like, you know, like is le- and leadership and what is leadership and what does it look like and, you know, is it something that you're born with or is it something that's yeah. you developed or is it... And I, like I, and, you know, I, I think it's, it's a bit of both. It's something that you've... I think there are people who are born with... That are happy to sort of take on that more leadership, you know, um, and then I think you also develop it as well. And I think I, <clears throat> I was a very, I was a very organised, like um, almost like a managerial type leader. Um, so I, I, I think I was very good at that. But I, there was other elements of of leadership that I had to sort of develop. Like I wasn't, you know, like I could, I'm, you know, happy to get up and talk and that, but. I wasn't the loudest, you know, like I'm not the, I'm not the, you know, sort of life of the party sort of leader, you know, who everyone sort of rallies around. It's more, you know, like just a a discipline of doing, you know, um, the right things, you know, consistently. And that was the sort of leader that I was. So I had to develop other aspects of leadership because of, you know, leadership encompasses a whole range of things. Yeah. My favorite podcast uh, always says leadership is influence. And we all, you know, you all have it. Yeah. So yeah. it's just about nurturing, developing. Yeah, developing it. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. And um, and like, what, what, um, what is your strong point as as a leader? Like, did you find like everyone came to you about certain things? Um, I think probably being able to 
set a path and then like keep everyone accountable to like heading in that direction. Um, like I think, yeah, like I had influence, but it was more to do with like how I went about things yeah. rather than being like, um, you know, I think, I think people are, are drawn to me, but I think there was other, there was probably other characters at the footy club that were, um, that probably had more natural, like, you know, like charisma or, you know, like, um, every team there's a good larrikin. Yeah, right? like, yeah, yeah, that yeah, people yeah. would be, that would, they would be yeah, drawn yeah. to, but then they probably, <laughs> they probably lack the, you know, the sensibility and the maturity to actually like, you know, like, hey, pull your head in, like, we're having a laugh, but now we're, we're, you know, um, so I like, I had to develop other aspects of my leadership to be able to make sure, you know, like I could, um, you know, like, I, I, you know, get to know people and, um, you know, like have, um, like I, I think when I, you know, and I, I left, when I left um, the footy, like the one thing I think I, you know, like I look back at my time and like I could have been better at, at building deeper connections with players. I think that probably was something that I wasn't as good at and I had to work harder. Um, yeah, I think I was very good at like making sure everyone was accountable and we were heading down this path and setting a path and this is what we're doing. Um, but building genuine, like, deep um, connections was something I think, like, I don't know whether it didn't come that, it wasn't something that, like, I, I probably had prioritised, especially in my early sort of captaincy days. It wasn't until later on it was like, oh, I've got to, I've got to work at this. And even since I finished footy, it's like, oh, that's something that I can still get better at. Um, yeah, and from a distance, it looks like that's something you're, like, good at to me so to think yeah you know, I, I think it was I think it, I just didn't realise I needed like that was something I um, I think I'd worked at it like, yeah, like, yeah it was yeah. like I think at footy we had there were so many other things going on and there was so many you know like we had you know busy lives with you know like um, you know like at least my wife was you know running her business and so like we had other networks of friends outside of footy so like the, probably the the you know trying to keep checking in with guys at the footy club all the time. I probably just didn't do that as well because maybe I just didn't realise it, you know, it needed to be done or... What uh, age did you have Isabella? I was 20... Wait, Isabel? Yeah. Isabella? Isabella. Isabel, yeah, Isabel. Um, what age? 27. Yeah. So she was, like, coming, coming to games and... Yeah, yeah, she was yeah, yeah, young, yeah. like, so, yeah. you know, when I... You know, she was two or three when I finished. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I finished at sort of 31. Um... Yeah, so she was only sort of young, but like, like I still had a good, you know, sort of nine, ten years where I, you know, was at footy club without kids and, you know. Um, so cool. Yeah, but like I was captain at 24. So. Yeah, and then was it, were you vice captain then captain? Or no, so I went, I wasn't, went straight the, to... I wasn't even in the leadership group and I went yeah. from not being in the leadership group to captain. To <laughs> yeah, like now I'm, like, I'm the captain now. Yeah, and there's yeah. guys who were probably like ten years older than me. You know, yeah. like who were at the club at that stage, and there was and other guys who were probably had more runs on the board. But I think Brad Scott, who was our coach, could see that that was like I was probably what was needed for the group at the time. And, and how, how did you find like I mean anyone who's <laughs> running a staff or you know in a position where they're sort of telling older people what to do to some extent? Like how did you find that as a twenty four year old? Um, you know, not saying you're bossing anyone around, yeah, but yeah. like. I think I went to the, like, I, I never came from the point of like, you've got to do this or you've got to do It's like, oh, hey, this is, it's almost like you know, I'd, I'd try and get buy-in from them on, okay, this is what we want to do. Like, you know, or, or you know, I, you know, ask them, what do you reckon? And, you know, get them, get their feedback. So it was like, they bought into what we were doing. So it was easy to then go and roll it out. Um, That's super smart at that age. Yeah. Are you taught that? that? Cause that's um, like, seems a bit like a learnt skill like co like I don't collaborating know, I think I probably realized just going like you, you, street smart well yeah, yeah you, I don't uh, you know like you realize you know I've been at the club long enough to realize you know you can't just go in and be like oh hey mate you got to do yeah. like you know you're going to army camp yeah, tomorrow you got to do this because I think yeah. the older guys have been like no nah, mate like you know well, you're kidding yourself it's like just picturing you go like walk until I tell you to stop yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I, I don't think I would ever yeah. would have done that it's like okay well how do we all and I don't like I think Brad our coach, um, he helped a lot with that and, you know, brought in people to, like, just, 
just to help guide and you know like I learned a lot about leadership through footy um, and you know through um, you know like some of the like just yeah having other people come in and, and hearing them and, and you know getting their advice and and what what makes a good coach for you like you know who was who the best coach you it could be under 12s or it could be you know um, or who you know like, who, I, had a, like I, had, I had a very good like juniors coach um, who was just our local coach um, who was you know he was probably fortunate he happened to be involved in the East Man also the, like you know our waffle club so you know you, most kids didn't have the level of footy knowledge as a you know young kid that we were getting you know from just their you know it's usually a dad who's you know like a yeah a sparky or yeah. a plumber you know yeah. like it's laying like, bricks like, and yeah you know, that's funny yeah. and just yeah. like it's just there but like so he he taught he us but he taught us more like he taught us obviously about footy but you know like he did things like he would play us in all different positions because he it was like it's really important that you understand you know like to play all over the ground and you know yeah. so like he taught us some some bigger picture things and a, you know like a, a lot about you know like team what it means to be in, in a team and you know like to be selfless and like so there were some things bigger than just almost like, fortunate at that age yeah. to get that so he training, was a big hey, like hey. I, I, you know, I really credit him for some um, like just having a big influence on me as a, as a junior um, but then we had a, like a couple of different coaches so like um, you know but, but I think like Brad Scott was sort of for my you know he's now coaching Essendon um, he was sort of the main coach for the last sort of, you know, half of my career. Um, and he was just, he, like, he was brilliant at being able to take a concept, break it down and teach it to, like, and make it understandable and, like, easy to go out there and execute. Um, you know, like, he probably... And for those of us not, like, privy to the mm. locker room stuff, it, when they're throwing plays out, is that, like, whiteboard... You know, like, well, how how yeah, are they like, well, drawing lot, it all out? Like, play. Like so, well, it all, it, a lot of it evolved, like, at a time. Yeah. Like, initially, it would just be, like, you watching the, you know, vision back on a, a TV screen and, you know. But, like, you know, by the end of it, they had, you know, like, a thing that you could draw on so you could play the vision and you could be, the guy could be drawing. What a time to be alive. On the, yeah, yeah, on yeah. The screen and, like, you know, even when I, like, I coached for a few years up at the Gold Coast Suns, um... And so now, like, they've got tools that you can, you know, you can edit it and cut and watch vision and... And do you guys watch the... Different camera angles, watch so we don't, we every don't watch... Every game back? Um, like, if you had a shocker, would you watch it back? As a player? Yeah, like, would you, mean? Would you um, watch your games back? So, like, as a player, you would just... I tend to not watch... Like, even when I played a good game, I'd, I wouldn't ever watch a game from start to finish. Um, like, I found by the end of it, like, I'd... Found it really hard to watch a lot of footy because it just it was just you know footy was your life so it was like you're living breathing talking about it so like but you would go back and you know you'd sit down with your line coach so you know I was in the midfield so my midfield coach you know um, I'd sit down with them and and he would you know like he would have his clips that he would have gone through the game and cut out and we just talked through different things that he you know thought was an important part you know of a game and like I would watch certain clips of my own um, but I I wouldn't tend to watch a game from start to finish because it would just be, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot, yeah. And what was like, was there ever, a, is there a game or like looking back at your career, which was, what, like yeah, 10, 12 years. 12 years, are there a few moments that sort of stand out or it might, it might not be necessarily like a win but a time that you felt like right in the zone or um, so what, what do you remember? Like, what, what's a great memory? <laughs> Very, it's a broad question. Broad question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I can go broader. I <laughs> um, uh, like I've got um, heaps of memories. Like you know, like like I still remember. I remember running out. Um, we played Richmond in a final, and I just, and I remember, remember running out of the MCG, and there was ninety thousand people, and they had these drums that the Richmond cheer squad would bang and I just remember running out and the sound of these drums was just so loud like it was just intense like it was just like the, the noise of it um, yeah so like I remember that but then there's like I remember you know like just the the feeling which is it's 
it's almost hard, and I suppose that's that's part of like you know why people love playing the game. It's like that, you know, playing finals at the MCG and like the siren going and we're winning, and that like that feeling for the next like ten to fifteen minutes was just that's like it's hard to explain. Like it's so exhilarating, but um, like I don't know if there's any other parts of my life where I've ever been able to get that like feeling. A natural that, high. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, like you know. But then there's like I, you know, then I've had some moments where it's just like, just like low, you know, like just, you know, because reality, like, you know, now it, it, players now there's a bit more movement and they can choose where you want to play a bit more. But like, as I said, like you get draft, like every player gets drafted, so you don't get to choose where you go. So like, a lot of like, you know, like. A lot of guys, their careers are, you know, some guys are very lucky they get drafted to a place at the right time and they have very successful and they win a lot of games. But, like, yeah, like, I won roughly 50% of the games that I played. So it's like, you know, like, yeah, you have this great, you know, like, 50% of the time you're having, you know, a great, <laughs> like, thing. But, like, yeah. 50% of the time, like, life sucks and, like, it's hard and it's a slog and it's, like, you know. And how do you recover from that, like, I mean, not just a bad game or a bad patch, but like a mistake in, in the game mm. that might be critical or crucial. Like how was, were you taught like emotional, I don't know, like what's the word, but how were you taught to recover? It was just like, you know, put your hand up. All good. I'm so sorry. We're moving on. Like how, how did you personally two, deal with that? Like two ways that I, um, <clears throat> so, um, I'd sort of learned to, to deal with it. Like, so one, so I had a period early in my career, I think the third year, where I sort of, I found, was it second or third year? And I found, I was sort of, um, like, we did we did this, like, we had a coach at the time who was, you know, you, you wouldn't, it, it's not how footy taught now, they wouldn't do it now, but like, it was like, almost like, we'd miss a kick, and he'd blow the whistle, and it was like, you'd be punished. So you'd be punished <laughs> to like, you know, to make a mistake, which is like the opposite of what we do, like yeah, yeah, yeah. where footy's gone. Um, and so, like, after a while, though, like, I would find, like, I'd get the ball and I'd, I'd do these, like, really loopy kick, like, you know, and, like, or I'd be at the back of the group and I wouldn't really want to get get involved. And I don't know, this is just... Uh, I don't even know where I... I, um, I remember... I remember reading something about Michael Jordan, the NBA player, um, and it was it said something like he took he missed more game winning shots than he, he he took like than he ever made. Sorry, and but you you actually don't ever remember like you only ever I only remember the ones he, you know that you see on the vision of him yeah. shooting and going in, and it was something like dropped like a penny dropped, and it was like if I don't like put myself out there, like I'm never going to get any better. And like I'm never gonna get to where I want to be as a player if I'm if I'm scared to get like if I'm scared to get the ball at training like how am I meant to improve yeah. and so like I had to I I don't know I somehow as a 19 20 year old was like I I can't be scared like I've got to get over that and I've got to be willing to make mistakes and I'll make mistakes but um, so that that so I think that from that early early day set me up for like just. With life, isn't you know, it? Like, yeah, yeah. you got to make it. Like, you know, yeah. like life is you make mistakes in life. So it's like, it's not about. And I, when I, you know, like teach, you know, and even like once we got the foot, like my later years, it was like to trying to instill in the guys. It's like, like footy, you know, and, and I suppose life is about making mistakes. So especially like footy, footy's it is a game of mistakes, but it's like who can make less of them? You know, like it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. how quickly can yeah. you get over making a mistake? get back into it because you're going to make a mistake it's not about whether you make a mistake or not it's like you're going to make a mistake so just accept you're going to make a mistake and just like how quickly can you get over it and how can you learn from it so next time you're in that position you don't you, you make a better choice um, so like I, I learned that um, in terms of like I'm talking about like you know like the um, emotionally or you know like the like I probably to get over things um like, I probably didn't, and it wasn't probably till late in my later years, but, like, I realised, like, when I'd lose a game early in my career, like, I'd just get into, like, a, a funk for, like, a few days. Like, I'd just be, I would have been an awful person to be around because I'd just be sad. 
upset, not want to talk to anyone. And um, I'm, I remember my wife, Elise, was like, you know, you can't like do this every time you lose a game. Um, but at the time, like, I probably didn't have that. So in the end, what I did was like, I became very, um, I became very level after, you know, whether we went, went or, like, which was, which was great, at the, you know, because it helped me, you know, like survive the, the, the lows, you know, um, but I, then I probably didn't really like enjoy the highs sometimes because it was like, okay, well, you know, like let's move on to next weekend, you know, like it's, you know, so like, but I, I think I probably just suppressed and numbed a lot of the, the feelings for a long time, um, which is, I've sort of had to unravel <laughs> yeah. over the last, you know, few years and even, and even, you know, towards the end of my career, we started to, you know, like I got challenged a bit from where the guy, you know, like how can I show more emotion, you know, like on the field and use, you know, channel the emotion to actually help lead the team. Um, and I think it was that, you know, I started to realise, like, actually, yeah, I have just, I've become very, like, numb to, like, a win or a loss, you know. <laughs> but, like, it was, yeah. that was my yeah. coping strategy to get through, like, some really hard times. Yeah. Um, but then I realised, like, I wouldn't enjoy, like, I wouldn't even allow myself to enjoy a win because it would be like, oh, cool, we got the job done, okay, well, like, you know, what's next week, how can we get better, and what do we need to do, and, you know, and I'd become very methodical about, like, the process of it, rather than, you know, like, also allow myself to... You know, the feel, to almost. feel it, yeah. Yeah. Feel it. yeah, that's really interesting. I guess that's, like, parenting skills 101, right? Life skills. <laughs> and, um, and now... Going out, you said that like eighty ninety thousand 90,000 MCG, mm. is that what you said? MCG. Yeah. Um, how, like how, how is that? Because you can't hear anything mm. and are you normally like, are you in a normal game at like a 15, 20,000 capacity? Can you hear um, or, or, or you go on a feel or you're like watching, like how much do you need to hear? How distracting is the crowd or is it awesome? No, no, like, oh, no the crowd's amazing. Like, yeah, yeah. you, you like, you can literally, you know, like you're out there, like, you know, you say, like, you get, you get, time, you get most of the time, it, like, it sort of, it will blur into the, the, the crowd noise blurs into the background because you're like, you're focused, but then yeah. there'll be times where you're like, after a goals kick or whatever, or like, you know, you're standing for, before the ball's bounced or, you know, like where you can actually, you can hear the crowd start to, like, you know, and you, you like literally feel like tingles on your arm, like as you're about That's to, like. Sick. Do you ever get any giant heckles? Um, well, like I said, most of like the only ever time I'd really hear anyone heckle is when you come off and you'd walk oh, up and yeah, down yeah, the sides, yeah. and that's that's the only time because when you're out there, like you know, like even if it was quite like a smaller crowd, someone yelled, like it's just so much going on, and you're so focused on the ball and you know, like your opponents and you know, like where the other players are, you just it's just hard to that that information just goes straight over your head. Yeah, and then looking back to to cross codes. Um, say to NRL, was something like the state of origin obviously not applicable because most of it happens in, in Vic, maybe, like, you know, New South Wales versus Queensland. But was there games, like, or playing for Australia, was there certain things you just wish that the AFL had that didn't have? Um, oh, I think, I think it'd, it'd be amazing to, like, I think, like, if you could make it more international, like, we had international rules, like, but you're playing games like Ireland and, you know, a bit of a gap, like, like, I played that, um, you know, when, like, um, but it's still not, so, like, it'd be, you know, like, what the, you know, the state of origin, you know, where it's, like, a big, you know, massive thing, or, like, the, you know, Union World Cup, like, or the, you know, soccer is going to play, like, it'd be great if AFL was, you know, like, you know, more universal so we could actually go and play that was that'd be funny that would be pretty cool but otherwise did you play for australia played for australia yeah oh cool i mean yeah, yeah. amazing and um mentioned uh, like obviously elise like how integral she's amazing if you're mm. just listening into this she's awesome uh, how, how did how it like how much of a part of y your development do you sort of credit her for or you know how how integral was she in your sort of journey to footy Journey through footy. Oh yeah. man, like I think it's a tough, it's a tough life being a, a partner of you know someone that plays footy or you know or any elite or being a, you know any elite person because they're they're the you know like they get the 
they get the worst of you sometimes. Like, you know, when you come home, as I said, like, you know, I'd come home and I'd just be, like, after a loss, I'd just be in a, you know, like, especially early days, like a, a really, like, foul mood for a couple of days. So they, they, you know, they're dealing with you, you know, like, away from all the glitz and the glamour and they get you when you're just, you know, processing and Lowly dealing. real. Yeah, dealing <laughs> yeah, yeah, with, yeah, like, yeah. all the, like, stuff that yeah. you have to, like, you know, deal with and, you know, like, um, or when you're tired and, you know, like, so, like, yeah, like, so she, yeah, massive, like, she's a massive part, like, and, you know, we've been together for a long time now, so, she, you know, she, she was there before I, you know, started playing, so, I suppose, I, like, yeah, hopefully, and one thing I, I tried really hard was, like, for footy not to, change me as like you know like oh this sort of like footy is what i do it's not who i am you know that was something that I, I really tried to you know like it yeah. like it definitely became like i did I, I definitely identified with footy because it's it's such a big part but like tried not to make it like that's the person I'm, I'm that person you know like because of like footy or like it's you know it's just it's what i do um you know and, and me andrew as a person is separate to that like you know when I, I bring you know like my good qualities to footy and you know all of that or shit qualities whatever you know but like um that I, I just didn't want it to get caught up with like now I'm a footy player I can you know like yeah. I'm this other person like I never wanted to be that yeah and then what what um so what happened post-career came to yeah so post-career we we sort of came was, out of melbourne yeah we were what like, year what year we're talking so i moved i finished in in 2017 so i moved up um yeah we were like um i was sort of ready for a change and we didn't you know we were sort of my brother was playing at the gold coast and um so, so we you were one club one club player. I was, yeah yeah so i played for north for the whole time and so i thought oh maybe i'll come and look you know, to come up there, and it did sort of work out, and Alex was having a bit of a hard time, um, you know, with, with her health at the, the time, and was just like, she felt like she needed to get out of Melbourne, so, you know, we had Isabel, and we just had Jude, um, was just born, so, anyway, we came up to, to Gold Coast, and, well, it's not quite right um, for us, and we came down to Byron for a day, just to have a bit of a break, and we're like, oh, this is a pretty good place, so we... Yeah, we literally jumped online, found a house the next day, and yeah, moved here like a month later, and um, so we've so been cool. here six and a half years now. And I've, yeah, I've heard Elise tell that story about mm. you know coming out of the Gold Coast, mm. confused, coming into Byron, feeling a sense of peace. Yeah, driving down the driveway of your house. Yeah, to, and feeling like she's been there before. Beautiful, mm. like amazing story. Mm. And um, and what's next for you? Like, so you were doing coaching at the Suns. Yeah, so coaching at the Suns. Yeah, and then the last sort of once, like the whole you know, like because we're you know just south of the Queensland border, it was sort of borders and COVID and all that made it hard. So I finished that up a couple of years ago, and I've been um, building a house the last couple of years. On the tools? Been on the tools, yeah. So that's something How's the I, skill I, I really set? wanted to, yeah, like, skill set's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm, I'm, the, what, um, I'm the greatest the, tradie, but I, like, what's I, the lo strength? I love it. Um, what's the, I don't know what strength, I'm good at just, I'm good at labouring, so I can just, I can work and I've got a good work ethic, so I can, I don't mind a bit of hard labour. So, so good. Yeah, but I, like, I, we built in Melbourne and then we built, um, I, we did another place in Perth and so... So we thought we might go back home at the end of my career, but never did. So, but I never, I was never sort of fully involved, like, in, you know, I was obviously external, you know, um, watching them. And I, I just loved the process of building through that. And I was like, oh, I'd love to have a life experience of building. So, yeah. So when, when everything was, you know, like the finished work up at the, at the Gold Coast, it was like, what do we do? It was like, oh, well, maybe now's a good time to... Don the tool belt. Yeah, and in, in yeah. hindsight, it probably wasn't having a then another newborn coming to the mix <laughs> and you know, trying to build with that. Yeah. And, um, is Zara, yeah, is it three, Zara, yeah, three so, now? Yeah, yeah, so Zara three. So like, yeah. yeah, so she was born just before we sort of kicked the project off. So genius. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so that wasn't the greatest um, plan, but like it's uh, like I've loved, like I love being you know involved and uh, like I'd love to keep being involved in property. Um, to some, you know, whether I, it's something I do full time or I just have a project on the go, but I really love that, the process of either, you know, building something new or maybe even looking at renovating 
places, so I'd love to do that. Um, and yeah, I've got a business degree, so I, I studied during uni. Um, yeah, that's cool. So yeah, so, what so studied, studied during footy? I know you mean that's all. That's awesome. Actually, yeah. was that something the club was implementing at that point, or was that just? I think oh. it was sort of like they tried. Like you know, it was definitely a focus of you know trying to get guys involved in something outside of footy. But I think I, I spoke about at, you know, earlier. It was like I always knew footy could end at any time, and I needed so like I was always you know like I always had a mind like I need to be. There needs to be something else after. And like, you know, I haven't really had to use the degree as such, you know, up until this point. Except um, for the local preschool treasury. Yeah, probably <laughs> doing that. But yeah. like it's, you know, like I, I have a business, like I enjoy business, I enjoy finance. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just sort of slowly finding out, a few, I've got a few different ideas and just sort of investigating different things. But, um, yeah, yeah, the house is sort of... Yeah, we'll finish that in the next sort of six months. Um, it's been the all-consuming fire, probably. Yeah, so it's like I want to get that, get through that. You know, get the make sure all the kids and you know we're all in a, a happy, healthy space, and you know sort of venture out into the next next chapter of life. And give it, give your team a shout out. Which team? The de- oh, the, the Devils. <laughs> oh, no, the yeah. only te- is it the is it called they called the Byron Devils? Bay, no, the, you mean the Byron Bay Footy Club, the local yeah. one. So like I, I yeah we um so I coach the local Byron Bay. Magpies. Magpies. But we've we've actually joined yeah. with um, another team, Ballina, this year. So we've created a new entity, the the Southern Stingrays. So we're, uh, yeah, we we so I coached that with another guy, um, Shay, who's a, a local lad, um, which is great. So like I I enjoy. What's I enjoy being part of like. Did you come up with the Stingray? And um, no, I didn't come up with the Stingray, but like I I enjoy being part of community stuff and, and building yeah. towards something and you know like what you know like you get people from all different walks coming in and you know like and just sort of connecting them and, and creating a space of belonging and you know you know sort of working towards trying to trying to achieve something on the field um so like i, I really enjoy enjoy doing that enjoy you know being able to pass on the knowledge i've, I've obtained over the last sort of 15 20 years of you know elite sort of sport and um yeah i feel like i can I can make a difference in that sort of space and, um, you know, my young fellow, Jude's just started his journey of footy and I just, yeah, I'd love for him if he ever wants to go on and do it, that there's a bit of a pathway he can, he can make to, to play at whatever, whatever level of footy that is and, you know. Local Byron team. And you guys, you being a little bit modest, but you, you won the grand final last we won, year. won the grand final this, last year. We've gone up a, another level. So we've gone up a, a, oh, a competition. Okay, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. year and um, been a bit tougher this year. So. <laughs> yeah. We need some sponsors. <laughs> yeah, one, one of many. But it's, money. it's um Yeah, it's just part of, you know, like, it's just part of sport. You know, you know sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose and it's about the journey and you know enjoying it along the way and, and yeah. do you ever want to rip rip the boots on and i did you? last year this year sometimes but i'm i don't know, I'm getting on and you know like um i don't get to train consistently as, as, as much so i i do get worried about just you know going down with something <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Having to, like, this you picture know, you like and pushing and a wheelbarrow in an ugg boot <laughs> carrying the kids yeah. around at you know at yeah. home and how that sort of affects life sort of you know once i'm back at doing my other sort of my other uh, obligations, so um, maybe at some stage we'll get out there because I do, I do get itchy every now and then to be like, ah, oh, and what, I still you... feel like I've got it. I, d- I don't. But <laughs> I, I still feel like I do it from time to time. And will you coach Jude's team? Um, yeah, I think yeah, probably. I'm sure I probably will. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. good. And um, and you know, like obviously, um, sort of a wide audience like this one. Um, what would you like? You know, whether someone's running a business or a stay-at-home dad or stay-at-home mom or looking to get into professional sport or something, like what would your what would your encouragement to people be in terms of just like um, if they had one shot, one opportunity to, to wrap it up? Like <laughs> what, what what would you say? A couple of life lessons or something. A couple of life lessons. Or one life lesson. Um I don't know, find find something you enjoy. Like find like I think, you know, you've gotta be like life's life's this life's too short to like um, be doing things that you you hate all the time. Like you know, find something that you really you enjoy that you get passionate about, and you know, go after it. And you know, like it doesn't matter what level it's at, whether it's you know, like 
amateur, professional, or like you know, it doesn't matter. All like all the way through, like just find something that you feel really, you know, like you feel passionate about or you enjoy, and and get yeah, get involved, and you know, like and then work out what success is to you in that, like you know, and and um, I think you know, your like your measure of success doesn't have to be someone else's. So like, come up with what you think's you know, like success should be, and yeah, go after that. Um, and and as someone, or we'll land the plane on this one, but if someone, you know, maybe used to enjoy um, whatever it is, you know, and they're currently going through a slump, so they used to find joy in, in business, parenthood, mm. marriage, you know, slumping, what's your encouragement to the, to the, to the Dr. Zeus going through a slump um, situation? I think either find, find other people around you in your network or maybe even outside of your network and... And just, I don't know, go and have a beer with them, get in touch with them, have a coffee, like whatever it is. Like, like I find I get encouragement by listening to people's stories or listening to what people have been through or, you know, like being able to just share with them my experiences or what I'm, you know, like having troubles with or what I'm doing well with. Um, and I think, yeah, just having people to bounce things off and, you know, just have, just have a, a, you know, Broaden your network of people and, and find people that you sort of resonate with and, um, you know, can have a positive influence upon your life. And yeah, like the more people you have like that, the, the easier life gets, you know, you were all on this journey together, so I might, as well, I might as well make it a good one. Spoken like a true captain. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. No. Awesome. Um, Pleasure.